Perhaps you've heard the expression, it's all fun until somebody loses an eye. Safety is more than just a given set of rules or uh, personal protective equipment. It's actually a state of mind. We're either observant of safety or we're not. Those who observe safety tend to have a pleasant day and those who don't uh, create an incident where uh, they or someone else ends up in the emergency room or in the worst case, a morgue. So I implore you to become safety minded uh, for your sake and the well of others as well as others. Um, and this is the final installment of the technician license course, uh, as you've likely guessed. It's all about safety. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. Again, this is the Amateur Radio Technician License Course, Lesson 10. I'm your instructor, uh, Gary Stevens, uh, Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra, that's KE2GS. We're going to discuss uh, sub-element uh, 10, which is electrical safety. Uh, there's three questions out of three groups. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, AC, DC power circuits, antenna installations, and RF hazards. Power circuits and hazards, so we're talking about hazardous voltages, fuses, circuit breakers, grounding, lightning protection, battery safety, and electrical code compliance. Uh, did you know that farmers can actually weld with a tractor battery? That's because they deliver uh, several hundred amps of uh, starting current. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that safety hazard of a 12-volt storage battery is shorting the terminals can cause burns, fire, and even an explosion. Yeah, here's a picture of uh, a burn from an electrical hazard. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a health hazard presented by electrical current uh, flowing through the body is that it can cause uh, injury by heating the tissue, it can disrupt the electrical functions of cells, and it can cause involuntary muscle contractions. For safety, it's important that our equipment is grounded. And for the exam, you need to know that in the United States, equipment ground uh, is always a green wire uh, in a three-wire electrical circuit. A fuse is more than a source of aggravation. Uh, you know, for, need to know for the exam that uh, the purpose of the fuse is an electrical circuit is to uh, interrupt power in case of overload. It's always a bad idea to install a 20 amp fuse in the place of a 5 amp fuse because it could cause a fire. I like this extension cord here because it has a ground fault interrupter. For the exam, you need to know ways of guarding against shock uh, on your electric station. You know, you three wire cords, uh, make sure that all the connections are common safety ground, and it's protected by a ground fault interrupter. When you have outside antennas, uh, there's always danger of lightning. You need to know for the exam that uh, protection taken uh, installing devices for lightning protection, a coaxial feed line, is to mount all the protectors onto a metal plate that in turn is connected to an external ground rod. That diverts all the energy of the lightning into the ground rather than into your house. Pretty familiar with fuses and circuit breakers, but for the exam, you need to know that a fuse or circuit breaker in series with an AC hot conductor is safety equipment that should always be included in a home built equipment that's powered from 120 volts AC. Yeah, always ground your equipment, uh, it's one of the safety features that you can do. External uh, ground rods is the easiest way to connect it, and they should bond together with heavy wire or a conductive strap. The faster the electrons flow, the hotter conductors get. So if a lead storage acid battery uh, is charged or discharged too quickly, it can overheat and give off flammable gas, even explode. A large capacitor can hold a significant amount of electricity energy. Um, so for the exam, you need to know that you might receive an electrical shock from a charged stored in a large capacitor in a power supply when it is turned off or even disconnected. I'm going to talk about uh, antenna safety, uh, you know, tower safety and grounding, erecting an antenna support system, and uh, safely in installing an antenna. 
So as you recall, we can have an antenna up to about 200 foot. So you can imagine something falling could hurt. So for the exam, uh, do you know that members of the tower work team should wear a hard hat uh, and safety glasses at all times? Climbing a tower is a lot like climbing the face of a mountain. Uh, we need the right equipment. For the exam, you need to know there's a good practice to observe before climbing an antenna tower is to put on and carefully inspect your climbing harness and safety glasses. You wouldn't climb a mountain face by yourself, so don't climb a tower by yourself. Always have a helper or an observer. This should be a no-brainer. For the exam, you need to know that a safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower is look and stay awake and stay clear of overhead electrical wires. Duh! Lifting up uh, heavy equipment is uh, essential to use the right stuff. For the exam, you need to know what a gym pole is. It's used to lift tower sections or antennas. For the exam, we also need to know the minimum safe distance to allow us uh, to allow when we're installing an antenna. Uh, it's, a, it's 10 feet. Don't go closer than 10 feet to a power line. I mean, a, a crank up tower without following the guidelines could uh, prove fatal. Um, for the exam, you need to know that the important safety rule to remember when using a crank up tower is this type of tower must not be climbed unless it's retracted or mechanical safety locking devices are installed. For a mass type antenna system uh, on your house, one grounding rod might be adequate. For a tower, it uh, needs more. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a separate eight foot long ground rod for each tower leg is bonded to the tower and to each other is considered to be a proper grounding method for a tower. Uh, we should avoid, <clears throat> at all costs, attaching an antenna to a utility pole. Uh, yeah, just know that for a test. It's a bad idea. Sharp bends are, are really particularly bad when it comes to high voltage, uh, like lightning, uh, because it uh, creates a place for it to arc from. Uh, for the exam, you just need to know that a sharp bend must be avoided when installing grounding conductors used for lightning protection. A gradual one is preferred. Know that your uh, local electrical code supersedes anything that the FCC says, so always check your local uh, codes when grounding your equipment and your radio towers and antennas. Because electricity follows the path of resistance, we need to know for the exam that it's a good practice when installing ground wires on a tower for lightning protections to ensure that all connections are short and direct. A turnbuckle is a type of device that can uh, we use for tensioning uh, cables and stuff, and the nice thing about it is it uh, prevents loosening. So for the exam, you need to know that the purpose of the safety wire through a turnbuckle used to tension the wire guidelines is to prevent loosening of the guy line from vibration, mostly from the wind. In this final section, we're going to talk about RF hazards, uh, radiation exposure, proximity to antennas, uh, recognizing safety power levels, exposure to others, radiation types, and duty cycles. There are basically two types of radiation. There's ionizing and non-ionizing. So ionizing is like from a nuclear weapon uh, or gamma rays from the sun. And non-ionizing radiation uh, is uh, the type from radio uh, waves. So for the exam, you need to know that non-ionizing radiation is a type of radiation in VHF and UHF radio signals. Exposure of radio waves. Uh, frequency matters. Uh, the higher the frequency, the more serious uh, consequences there are. So know for the exam that 50 megahertz is the lowest value for maximum permissible exposure limit. Higher frequencies uh, uh, take less energy to cause damage. Uh, and for that reason, uh, you need to know for the exam that 50 watts peak envelope power at the antenna is the maximum power level that an amateur uh, station uh, may use at VHF frequencies before an RF exposure evaluation is required. 
Frequency, distance, and radiation patterns are all factors we should be concerned with with uh, radiation. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that uh, there are, these are factors uh, that we need to uh, evaluate when people are near our amateur radio station. As before, the frequencies uh, matter when it comes to uh, the human body absorbing radiation. That's why infrared or you know the rays of the sun burn, give us sunburn. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that the human body resorb, absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than others. Is why exposure limits vary with frequency. The FCC has created uh, some bulletins on helping us calculate uh, our exposures. Um, so for the exam, we need to know that the following is an acceptable method of determining that our station complies with the FCC RF exposure regulations by calculating uh, our formulas based on the FCC bulletin, uh, calculating based on a computer model, or by measuring the field strength using calibrated equipment. An antenna is, is a likely you're likely to get burnt. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that a person accidentally touching the antenna when you're transmitting uh, might receive a painful burn. Just don't do it. And guys, don't radiate your neighbors. Uh, know for the exam that an amateur operators need to relocate antennas in order to prevent exposure from RF radiation in excess of FCC supplied limits. You need to know for the exam, whenever you buy new equipment, you may, it's time to reevaluate your uh, equipment uh, and make sure that you're compliant with the uh, RF uh, safety regulations. Duty cycle effectively uh, measures when the transmitter's on and when it's off. Uh, know for the exam that it affects the average exposure of people to radiation. This uh, diagram shows the difference between non-ionizing and ionizing radiation that we discussed earlier. Note for the exam that uh, RF radiation does not have sufficient energy to cause genetic gen uh, damage, uh, contrary to popular belief. The last question uh, requires a little math. Uh, so just know for the exam that uh, if the average time for exposure is six minutes and the power dis uh, density or duty cycle is represented by three minutes, which is uh, on and three minutes off, which is 50% duty cycle, then being present uh, for the entire six minutes is two times as much. This concludes our technician license course. Good luck on your exam, and uh, be sure to check out uh, my videos on the Amateur Radio General License course. Until next time, never stop learning. Uh -huh.